Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, and this is episode 56, recorded on September 18th, 2013. If you would like to see other of my Walk in the Park episodes, you can go to my vid blog or video blog at walkinpark.com, also at ithacafingerlakes.com. Either one will work. And uh, see lots of different kinds of shows. There's a lot of information about our parks and parks all over the world, in fact. So uh, I invite you to check that out. So uh, today we will start off at a Finger Lakes Land Trust Preserve. This is the Lindsay Parsons Biodiversity Preserve in West Danby, New York. Oh, about 10 miles south of Ithaca in the Cayuga Inlet Valley. Just very briefly there to show you this picture of folks walking one of the trails. It's uh, through, yes, goldenrod, goldenrod. This time of year, the end of summer, we're celebrating, well, I don't know if we're celebrating the end of summer, but we are certainly ending it and starting fall and lots and lots of goldenrod and many other wildflowers out there, largely in the, the aster family and so forth. So um, uh, go out and check out some of those things. Oh no, I'm not going to do that, you say, because I have hay fever and goldenrod just drives me nuts. No, no, maybe, maybe you think so, but uh, this is the actual culprit that uh, starts out in late, you know, mid to late summer as well. This is ragweed. Not so showy as goldenrod, but uh, it's very plentiful. It uh, grows in a lot of particular areas that have disturbed soil and so forth. And uh, one plant is said to be able to produce as many as two billion pollen grains that get blown around in the wind. That's how it reproduces, through wind pollination. So it's not goldenrod, it's ragweed. And uh, ragweed is said to be perhaps the, one of the most certainly most allergenic forms of, uh, well, plants, uh, pollen. The pollen is said to be the most allergenic or among the most allergenic of the plant pollens that cause so-called hay fever. Now I get hay fever mostly from hay, but um, hey, what the hay. Um, so we had summer concerts downtown in Ithaca and up at Cornell and at Teganic Falls and the summer concert series in downtown Ithaca, which is a public space, sort of like a park, although forced out onto uh, West State Street beyond the Commons because of all the construction of the Commons, which I understand is going to go on maybe another year, but uh, they had to do it. Uh, ended up on the first weekend in sep not first weekend, I'm sorry, the first Friday in September, Thursday and Friday, they had two concerts. And the final one was the very popular local Sim Redmond band. Just going to give you a tiny little clip of that, um, just to give you a goodbye sense. Uh, look at that here. Okay. Oh, that was a chip, wasn't it? I didn't give you any of their music. I just saw the end of a song there. Well, Sim Redmond Band, I'm sure their music is copyrighted, and if I put it up on the Internet, which I put all these shows on, uh, YouTube will, uh, their algorithm will find it and say, that's copyrighted. Well, you have permission to do that. So, um, so I, I have to kind of watch out for that. Um, Occasionally, I do get permission for copyrighted work. But the other big um, music event that happened in Ithaca this month, actually last weekend and Sunday, the 15th, I think it was, um, was Porch Fest all over the northeast corner of downtown Ithaca, the Fall Creek neighborhood. Actually, it's in between Fall Creek and Cascadilla Creek. This is Thompson Park right next to Cascadilla Creek over near uh, the end of Cascadilla Street and Cuga Street, that neighborhood was the staging area, the information area for Porch Fest. This is the seventh year. Well over 100 bands participated on people's porches. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that here. Um, go to another. Here's some highlights, some very quick tastes of Porch Fest.
Okay, so um, Porch Fest is a lot of fun, so if you can catch it this year, try it next year. It's a really wonderful community feeling, neighborhood feeling. People from all over around the, the city come together and you run into your friends and it's just really lovely. So um, I always have some friends out there that are playing their, their music and uh, I have to decide whether I'm gonna go see them or see somebody new. So, um, okay, next up here. Well, you know, I like to go for walks in the park, and so do you, and, and uh, probably. And uh, so I live not that far from Buttermilk Falls State Park along the Gorge Trail here. And uh, if you go to the lower part of the Gorge Trail, actually down near the bottom, there is a observation area that was built between the first, the two sections, the two bottom sections of Buttermilk Falls. Now, if you look from below at Buttermilk Falls, it looks like one waterfall, but it's actually kind of two. There's a first falls and a second falls, and then there's this um, less steep area between the two very steep cascades that uh, create that buttermilk type of effect. And um, so you can get this view from the little viewing area that's been built there. It's very nice. We'll take another look at that sometime, the actual um, stonework they've got there sometime. But uh, you go a little farther up on the right on the trail, and get along the fence and uh, you can look through the woods and get this very subtle view of the falls falling through the woods. If you come back after the leaves have come off like end of October, very beginning part of November, not long after that they're going to close the gorge because of the winter hazards. The leaves are gone, you may even be able to see this. So, um, But I'm going to take you, just give you a very brief video of that waterfall. Let's see. So there's all different kinds of ways to look at the waterfall. And um, anyway, that's that. So now let's go to Taganic Falls. Wait a minute. That's not Taganic Falls. That's Taganic Falls. Oh, OK. It looks a lot like Taganic Falls. It has this big stone amphitheater, the big pool at the bottom. This waterfall in Hawaii is called Akaka Falls, 442 feet high. Now, Taganic is 215 feet high. So this is more than twice as tall as Taganic, and it's more than twice as tall as Niagara Falls, for that matter, but neither of them. Well, Taganic, Taganic Falls is taller than Niagara a little bit. But uh, a friend of mine went to Hawaii, and she brought back some pictures, and she uh, um, you know, said I could share them online. And uh, she went into Akaka Falls, and uh, there's also this um, um, sign here, this exhibit by the falls. There's a trail, a little trail that goes into the falls, showing, comparing different kinds of waterfalls. And Akaka Falls is not the tallest falls in Hawaii by a long shot. Actually, this one is. Uh, I think it's Waihua Falls or something like that. I'm very bad at pronouncing it, these Hawaiian words. But in any case, it's something like 2,600 feet high and it's very difficult to get to in a remote area and hasn't been all built up with uh, trails and overlooks and parks and that sort of thing so I don't know exactly what it is but both of these waterfalls I understand are on the big island of Hawaii and uh, the Akaka Falls is eroded in the the lava rock that's uh, come off of Mauna Kea which is one of the huge uh, volcanoes in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park so, but this is in a state park. So um, anyway, that's pretty cool. Well, it turns out that this waterfall, the Waihula Falls or whatever it is, 
sorry, I don't have the name right on that, um, is taller than this one. This is Yosemite Falls in California, in Yosemite National Park, which I always thought was the tallest falls in the United States. It is the tallest falls in North America at some 2,300 feet, but not the tallest in the United States with the big waterfalls in Hawaii. So I am corrected in that. Thank you, friend. Um, well, my friend uh, who likes to, you know, keep her name private, she just doesn't like the publicity, but anyway, she likes to share the photographs, enjoys plants, loves plants, and these are some of the amazing tropical plants along the trail to Akaka Falls, including this thing that looks like some version of Bird of Paradise, and I uh, don't really know. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's uh, almost looks like bananas down there, so anyway, I'm very ignorant about these tropical plants get to the tropics every once in a while, but um, there, there's a lot of lot of beauty out there in the lushness of Hawaii. I'll get back to Hawaii someday. I've nominally been there, but really didn't get to travel around much when I went. So um, so now we're going to go back to, um, to Ithaca and to uh, Cayuga Lake. And this is one of my friend Bill Heck's aerial photographs. I think we used it last week, actually. We're going to go back to a park we visited briefly at the end of the last show. This is East Shore Park, just to the uh, southeast corner of the lake. I'll go back here. If you look at the southeast corner, the right-hand corner, lower right corner of the lake, and you go up a little bit along East Shore Drive there, and just sort of the upper end of those uh, buildings along the shore, um, much of that. Now you can look straight down on it. The buildings in the lower right, that's the location of the Cornell Sailing Center, and East Shore Park is along the shore there. The white building in the uh, right center is the Cornell Lake Source Cooling Building, and there's a little park, tiny little park, but a lovely one, very popular one, right on the shore of Cayuga Lake. In fact, the only public access to Cayuga Lake in the town of Ithaca, which surrounds the city like a donut. So uh, let's get down to ground level, looking at the uh, sign, and there's a little shelter there, shelter pavilion picnic table in there. It can even roll a wheelchair up there. It has a little overhang for a wheelchair and it's a great place. And you look at it, you notice in the back there is an exhibit which I talked about briefly last week. And let's take a closer look at that. This uh, I'm on the Scenic Resources Committee of the Town of Ithaca Conservation Board and this has been our principal project recently which was to get this exhibit about Cayuga Lake, Cayuga Lake's view uh, planned out and um, fabricated and put in place. The uh, town park crews uh, put this in place for us this year. Let's uh, take a closer look at what the sign is actually telling us. Cayuga Lake view. Here our minds can drift into the tranquility or turbulence of Cayuga Lake. We stop here for peace and renewal to see where wind, waves, sky, and forested slopes create one of the best views in Ithaca. Cayuga Lake lies in a grand groove gouged in an ancient valley during the past two million years by several vast ice age glaciers that overwhelmed New York State. Cayuga is 38 miles long, the longest of the 11 Finger Lakes. Though only a few feet deep at Stewart Park, beyond our view, beyond our view to the north, the lake's cold, dark depths sink 435 feet to more than 50 feet below sea level. The banks of southern Cayuga are too steep to farm. Some trees on the opposite shore may predate European settlement. Less than one-seventh of the lake's length is visible from here. So uh, pretty cool, huh? I uh, really can't, you, know, you think you're seeing Cayuga Lake, you're just seeing uh, the bottom seven or eight miles or so. Um, let's look at the other side of the sign. There is a map there. Scenic views in the town of Ithaca. That may not show up on your screen because that's on the edge, at least the, the label of that map. But uh, 10 really good views have been identified by the Scenic Resources Committee, and a uh, actual driving or biking route has been uh, planned out for you to go uh, look at them. Not all of them you can stop and look at, but you'll see them as you're driving along. And um, there are some, at least one place you can get out and have to walk to the view in a, in a park. But uh, I will get to that in a future show. I won't show that all this whole uh, route this time, but uh, let's take a look at the, uh, what the uh, words on the sign underneath the map say. The great view here is one of the best in the town of Ithaca, where we are proud of our scenic heritage and serious about conserving it. 
As the town surrounds the city of Ithaca with three hills and Cayuga Lake, we have many high spots and gorgeous open views. A prime stretch of forest on West Hill across the lake is one of several conservation zones on the town's hills. Keeping close watch over this watershed and its natural areas, the town invites you to help preserve Ithaca's natural beauty. A copy of this scenic tour map with directions for driving or biking the route is available at the Ithaca Tompkins Convention and Visitors Bureau at 904 East Shore Drive, which is just oh, maybe a quarter mile or so away from the uh, park, or at Ithaca's Town Hall on the corner of Buffalo and Tiago Streets, or online at www.town.ithaca.ny.us slash scenic. Well, that's the goal. There, we're still working on getting uh, the brochure that has the map and so forth up online there. It's on the website, so at this point, just search on the site for Scenic Views, Map, and Brochure in their search box, and you'll actually find the PDF of one of the versions of the brochure, which we are finalizing. But you can get all the information on that brochure, or you can, um, you know, print it off. Yeah, you can, you can pick it up, like it said, in one of those uh, two locations of the Visitors Bureau at the southeast corner of the lake and at Town Hall downtown. So, um, yeah, go out and check out some of those views. Let's see. I'm going to go over to actually start off my tour, which is all I'm going to get to do is to start it off. I'm going to go over to the uh, southwest corner of the lake. Now, you see at the southeast corner, there's a circle there of one of the views. That's 10. That was the, uh, the end of the trip, actually, at East Shore Park in the southwest corner of the lake, the uh, lower left corner of the lake there. It's number one. That's where the trip begins if you were to drive this tour around Ithaca. Actually, uh, it's as much valuable as a tour of the township of Ithaca as it is a tour of scenic views because it takes you all around the town. So you get a feel for the size of the town and the, the uh, landscape of the town and so forth. So uh, it's worth doing just for that purpose. Now, uh, so I'm going to go over to the southeast corner to number one there and look at a waterfall here. I took, took a picture of it. Now, I don't recommend you stop and take a picture of this waterfall. This is Williams Glen. This is actually the tour brochure. It says there are a number of, oh, something like seven little gorges and waterfalls as you go up Route 89 uh, above the west shore of the lake, coming down these little gorges. And the biggest one is Williams Glen, right at the city line with the town of Ithaca and next to Allen H. Treeman State Marine Park and up the hill from that is the Black Diamond Trail which is also run by the state parks. It's uh, still um, under construction. But uh, I you know, went over and took this picture standing right on the edge of the road and um, you know, I, it's, I don't really recommend it uh, because the traffic is whizzing by but I did it because I wanted to get the picture. So, uh, but uh, I was, I saw some other things there while I was taking that picture, so I took a little video of them, and I'll show you that. Okay. Uh, motorcycles. There were like 200 of them that came by me. Also, while the um, you were watching the waterfall, you could hear some traffic behind me. There were all the like cars and stuff. It's, uh, it's just not a good idea to stand there and take a picture. But that's what I did. And I saw those motorcycles. Well, huh. I had, as I drove over there from East Shore Park, I actually went by um, the Shimung Canal Trust Company parking lot the corner of Tacanic Boulevard and Buffalo Street on the West End. And there's where all the motorcycles were. And there's some big rally going on. There were cop cars, a fire engine. I don't know what was going on. 
And lo and behold, they, they followed me up along the lake, so uh, up around along the uh, Route 89, Tiganic Boulevard. So appeared to be going around the lake, which is, I think, is what they were doing. So I went back to the Shimung Canal Trust Company parking lot, which had hosted this motorcycle rally, uh, free of charge, I understand. And um, I found out what was going on. So something pretty neat. So we'll, I'll show you another video that will explain that. My name is Kelly Daly. I'm a sergeant with the New York State Police here in Tompkins County. I'm also an active member of Cops, Kids and Toys, which is a charitable organization in Tompkins County, uh, which we uh, raise money and collect toys uh, for kids for the Christmas season. Uh, today was what we call the a Cops, Kids and Toys motorcycle ride around the lake. Uh, basically, people come out, they pay a small fee to donate to Cops, Kids and Toys, and uh, they today happen to be escorted. Uh, there's approximately 200 bikes, and uh, they ride up the lake and then back down the lake, and they meet uh, at the Eagles Club uh, in the city of Ithaca afterwards for a nice chicken barbecue. Uh, which is part of the fee uh, for them to ride. It's a nice group effort. Uh, it's also a one of the many things that uh, Cops, Kids and Toys does to raise money to help the kids in Tompkins County get some good toys at Christmas. Thank you. Okay, so you can get more information about that uh, at their website, and uh, you have an email address and a phone number and so forth. They are a bona fide 501c3 charity, and uh, they uh, collect, purchase, and distribute toys and gifts to financially disadvantaged children in Tompkins County. I'm reading from their brochure here. Let's see if I can do this without putting it in front of my face. There, there we go. Um, started in the early 1980s when two City of Ithaca police officers helped out a few children. It is currently supported with volunteers from every law enforcement agency in Tompkins County, Tompkins County Probation Department, and many volunteers. Last year we furnished gifts to over 1,300 kids. So uh, you can get involved if you're interested. Um, I know when I worked at Finger Lake State Parks Regional Headquarters at Deganic Falls for so many years, the park police there were, were very involved in that, so it was a pretty cool thing. And uh, they had lots of different events, the motorcycle ride, the fall 5K run, no tap bowling tournament, American Legion Oasis fun fundraiser, Cornell's men's and women's ice hockey fundraiser, breakfast with Santa at the Dryden Hotel, McGuire's auto community oil change, recycling at grassroots, Trip Hammer Marketplace, Holiday Market Fest and Open House, gift donation drive at the shops at Ithaca Mall, Hunt's Auto Race Car Show. Most events request an unwrapped toy as a donation. So you can just show up at any of those events or locations. And um, you can also mail them money, and they give you an address on the website. So um, toy donation boxes are located throughout Tompkins County at local businesses, college camp and college campuses from mid-October until the second Tuesday in December. You can also drop off the unwrapped toys at any law enforcement agency list of locations is at their website blah 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 so very good uh cops kids and toys so that's what all those motorcycles were doing you know so wow pretty neat so um those were not all cops those were just motorcyclists that signed up and each paid a fee and that uh, they raised several thousand dollars doing that so um well we're gonna uh, don't have much time left here but i think we're gonna take a quick trip back to stewart park on the shore of the lake not far from east shore park but in the city of ithaca and I'll drop down to the shoreline. Oh, isn't that lovely? Now, you may want to go swimming somewhere this summer. You have a place to go swimming. Well, you know, there's the gorgeous uh, uh, Treman Pool got closed by in early August by storms. And, and um, well, in the old days, they used to swim at uh, Stewart Park. It was very shallow. It said swimming 
in the shallow waters of Cuga Lake was never optimum, but it was always popular. And that's one of the big complaints a lot of local residents have about Stewart Park is, why don't they have swimming there anymore? Why can't they get any more swimming? Well, I don't know if it's even feasible, but uh, here's a little bit of history of there. Look at the slides that were out there. You go out and climb up a slide and go down in the water. It's only a few feet deep. You can walk out some tremendous distance. And uh, here's a diving platform uh, they used to have. So um, let me just read what uh, one woman said in a discussion of this. Hazy memory, but I seem to remember a long boardwalk that went out way out into the lake. Well, to a little kid it seemed long, in an attempt to get past the worst of the muck. I remember trying to, quote, swim in that stuff. Your feet sank down in the muck, the water was cloudy, and it was shallow, never deepened. S quote, swimming at Stewart Park was always a disappointing experience. So um, one other person wrote, while swimming was popular, it was con conducted under less than optimum health and safety conditions. According to Tompkins County Health Department records, two drowning incidents, one in 1961 and a second in 1964, led to the county shutting down swimming at the park. In 1964, an adolescent boy drowned, and it took authorities three days of dragging the shallow lake bottom to find the body. Murky waters were blamed for the difficulty in finding the body and ultimately were the cause for closing the beach. Later that same year, County Health Department officials at the time were becoming increasingly concerned about pollution from the city's previous wastewater treatment plant, which treated wastewater far below today's standards, but ultimately poor water clarity is what brought swimming to an end in the park. So, um, no more swimming at uh, Stewart Park. Maybe someday there's proposals to uh, what it would take, but it would be ex to, to make it uh, swimmable again and the health department approvable, but uh, it's not... Uh, uh, anything that could be done without an enormous amount of engineering. So that's all of our show today. Uh, again, this is episode 56 on uh, uh, September 18th, 2013. Thanks for joining me. See you again soon.